Every now and then we come across a Territorian that needs a little tender love and care. Here at the Essington School, students are on a mission to protect some rather unusual looking locals. The students are helping to care for three pig-nosed turtles that are on loan from Crocodilus Park. The turtles are native to the Northern Territory and are an endangered species. These guys have been described as a cross between an elephant and a sea turtle and they certainly have some unique features. Their most striking feature is a long proboscis which allows the turtle to breathe while keeping its eyes submerged to continuously observe its underwater surroundings. Pig-nosed turtles are an endangered and protected species of animal and they're native to the top end. Students are actually in charge of day-to-day -day maintenance and monitoring of the turtles and the system. Uh, we did have expert advice from Crocodilus Park, which is where they came from, as well as uh, parks and wildlife. Sometimes called the Fly River Turtle, they occur in freshwater rivers, lakes, swamps and waterholes in the Northern Territory and the island of New Guinea. The Territory Wildlife Park is also concerned about their future and has several turtles on display. Um, when you look at their flippers, these guys actually have flippers which makes them closer related to a sea turtle than a freshwater turtle. Back at the freshwater turtle you can see he's actually got claws. So their bodies are very unique to any other Australian turtle species and even in the world. Pig-nosed turtles can reach up to 60 centimetres in length and weigh nearly 22 kilograms and they're quite a swimming machine. They feature flipper-like front limbs and heavily webbed hind limbs, which are great for paddling and swimming. In fact, they can be a true sprinter underwater when they want to be, and very graceful. We've got secure captive populations, and as long as we make sure we don't go and, uh, and trash our rivers, we'll probably keep them pretty safe. Let's hope that the work done by the Territory Wildlife Park and the Essington School students is enough to slow the decline in population of these very curious Territorians. Thanks Laura. For more information on pig-nosed turtles or any other endangered species, contact Parks and Wildlife or the Territory Wildlife Park. Now here's our resident scientist Shay with some more interesting science facts. Thanks Tora. Each week on the lab I'm going to be bringing you some interesting science facts and experiments. So let's start with Isaac Newton. He came up with some laws considered so fundamental that every student in science has to learn them. Newton's first law. An object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will remain in motion until an external force acts on it. Now here's a great example of Newton's first law. The wakeboard remains at rest until an external force, like a powerboat, acts on it. Isaac Newton developed these theories whilst a professor at the Cambridge University in 1687. Now if you think that's clever, check this out. To every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So that's it for me. I'll see you guys the next time you drop by the lab. Now, scientists just don't hang out in labs all day. They get to go out and explore all kinds of interesting workplaces. Yeah, some scientists even have to catch a helicopter to work. But to do this, they have to take part in some pretty serious survival courses. This week, the team from the lab took part in an aviation survival course. And I went along for the ride, so let's check it out. G'day, guys. Today I'm out at IFAP, which is located at Barham Farm. These guys teach a lot of nationally accredited courses on survival and safety, which for some scientists could be a matter of life and even death. So let's go check it out. In the Timor Sea, northwest of Darwin, many scientists are actively working aboard oil rigs and are transported in and out by helicopter, flying over many kilometres of open water. In order to catch this aerial taxi to work, they need to complete an intensive aviation survival course. The HUA training specifically is to ensure that people going offshore can actually survive if in the unlikely event that they actually take a ditch in a helicopter. So it's all about ensuring that they can actually get out from the helicopter in water into their life raft and actually be rescued. The helicopter underwater escape training has been shown to increase survival rates up to 250%. 
Participants learn life raft and life jacket drills and escape training from an aircraft simulator. Basically what they do is they, they mimic the actions of the aircraft sinking underwater. We'll do that in a straight down position first up. So they'll be doing a, a straight up ditch under the water with no windows. From there the complexity will get a little bit much, uh, bit more involved. We'll add windows into the, into the equation. And from there we'll start developing into uh, inversions which means we will uh, roll the, the module at a 180 degree angle, so on its, right on its end and uh, they'll be uh, doing escapes through open windows and then gradually building up to a scenario where they're crossing the cabin and removing windows underwater inverted. But what we're trying to uh, sell to our customers is the fact that if they get out in a real survival situation, they're gonna need to be able to act in a disciplined manner. And the, these simple, simple procedures we're showing them today could possibly save their lives. How was it, Laura? It was good. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> So there you go, work in science can be heaps of fun, but there are lots of risks involved. So that's why health and safety is such a big issue. But how cool would it be to catch a helicopter to work every day? Personally, I think it's pretty cool. Oh, you didn't look too happy being strapped into that helicopter underwater. It was a bit scary at first, but it's very important training for a lot of scientists. Hey guys, that's it for this episode. We hope you really enjoyed the show. We had heaps of fun making it. Yeah, and a special thanks to the Essington School Down for helping pull the show together. We're very much looking forward to bringing you the full series in 2008. So see you in... The Lab! The lab.